Welcome to the UGC lecture series. In this lecture series, we are talking about postgraduate courses and here we are talking about the paper called data structures and in this module we are going to talk about a very important data structures called the Q and we are going to talk about the Q from the ADT perspective. We have already seen other uh, data structures like list and stacks which we also spoke about from the ADT perspective. So, these are the people involved in uh, creating this particular module and uh, now let us look at the learning objectives of this module. Okay. So, the learning objectives of this module are basically to understand the concept of a queue just like we did to understand the concept of a stack we, here we are talking about understanding the concept of a queue. Okay. Then we are going to look at the method for defining a queue, what are the basic requirements for defining a queue and then we are looking at the different queue operations just like we did. This is basically implementation independent that is we are looking at it of, at the operations from an ADT viewpoint. Okay. Then we are going to look at some in typical uses of queues just like stack was a very important data structures from the computing viewpoint. Uh, the queue is a, an equally important data structure from the um, computing viewpoint and some of the basic keywords that we are going to talk about here is of, of course the queue and the queue ADT and the principle on which queues are based the FIFO principle. So, if you know understand the FIFO uh, principle you have understood the concept of queues. Now, this queue uh, FIFO principle is the same as a everyday queue. So, let us look at some examples of everyday queues. So, we are going to look at first some uh, characters these are characters that you often see in advertisements and uh, this is a typical example of a queue of those characters. Then you see look at a long queue this could be to enter into a ship to enter into a plane it could be for uh, some uh, purchase or some these this is a typical queue that you can have. You can also have in a traffic jam a queue of cars. So, these are some uh, everyday examples of queues. Now, let us go a little further into how uh, the understanding of the concept of queues. So, we talk about a queue as having an input and an output any list for that matter has an input and an output. But the queue as we already spoke uh, about follows the first in first out policy what does this means the first element that comes into the queue is the first element that leaves the queue. Okay. So, that is the uh, concept of queue and you see here that um, A has first entered the queue and A is the one that first leaves the queue. So, you have uh, uh, two uh, ends to the queue here we will call it as input and output later on we will look at the technical terms of uh, what these ends are called. Uh, now, let us just look at some examples you have a car coming he pays and leaves this is a typical toll station queue. Then you have check in at the big bazaar where customer comes checks out and leaves and uh, this is more examples like printers printer uh, you know queue office uh, office hours where you stand in the queue for lot of things. So, these are typical examples of queues basically these queues are for servicing uh, providing service. Now, let us go a little more detail into a queue. Uh, now, this is the uh, everyday queue that we have already seen where you have a line of people standing that is a typical example to get some service like for example, it could be a bank counter to get some transaction done to buy a ticket and so on to check out and which we have already seen this is everyday queue. Now, let us look at the queue from a computer viewpoint. Okay. So, this is the computer queue the meaning is that the queue from the computer viewpoint. So, here as I already told you we have two specially designated ends called the front of the queue and the rear of the queue and what is this front of the queue. Now, as we already told in any uh, data structure you have insertion and deletion. So, in a queue the insertion is done at a specially designated pointer called the rear and the operation of insertion from the queue viewpoint is called end queue. Similarly, you remove or uh, an element from a queue remember queue is a restricted list. So, again you are removing or deleting an element, but from the queue viewpoint it is called DQ and you do that uh, deletion from the specially designated pointer called the front. So, this is a computer version of a queue. Now, again let us go a little more detail into what are the comp what are the characteristics of a queue. So, uh, it is an ordered list of homogeneous elements what does homogeneous means homogeneous means all the elements of the queue are of the same type it could be as simple as an integer it could be as simple as a string or it could be as complex as a record. But whatever it is that a structured record or something but whatever it is all the elements are of the same type. So, it is called homogeneous this was true of stack also. Okay. Unlike a stack uh, 
which had only one end either through which you inserted and deleted q's have two ends which we have already seen in the previous slide. So, elements are added at one end and elements are deleted from the other end ok. So, that is the q and a q is similar to a list ok it is similar to a list, but items are added only at one end and removed from the other front uh, from the other end uh, which is called the um, front. So, the element added first is always removed first and that is why we say that the q follows the first in first out policy or in other words the FIFO policy. Now, let us uh, look at some q terminology. So, you have as I already told you a q consists of two ends one called the front and one called the rear of the q and uh, you have a q element uh, q can contain elements and you have a length associated with the q in this example it is having a length of 5. And you can also have an empty queue where the length is equal to 0, this is just created no entries in the queue. So, this is a typical queue situation. Now, let us look at some basic features of queues. As I already told you, it is homogeneous, the elements inside the queue are not ordered, it is ordered only by the place in which it is ent how it is entered, that is all. There is no implicit ordering of elements in the queue. Uh, multiple occurrences of the same item, it is allowed, no problem, ok. Uh, as I already told you uh, q is a first in first out sequence of elements and as I already told you elements can be added only at one end called the rear of the q and can be removed only from the other end called the front of the q. So, this is the basic concept if you understand this you have understood q's ok. So, the length of a q is the number of element it contains. So, empty q has a length of 0. Now, let us look at the difference between stacks and q's. So, this is the stack which you have already seen in the previous module. So, the stack is the last in first out and if you look at this both the push and the pop op operations that is push is the insertion uh, insertion of stack and pop is the deletion from a stack both happen at one end. Now, if you look at the queue on the other hand it is follows the first in first out policy and the queue uh, the insertion here is called n queue and it follows one end and the deletion occurs at from the other end. So, this is the difference between just to compare between stack and queues. Now, uh, as I already told you the front will point to the front element, rear will point to the rear element. So, it is an ordered collection of data items, delete item from the front of the queue, insert item at the rear of the queue, it is an FOF, FIFO structure just to summarize what the queue means. So, how do we work with queues? That is the next um, question that we have to answer. Up to now we have understood the concept of queues that it is an FIFO uh, structure, it has two ends one called the front and one called the rear and you always in delete from the front and insert in the rear. This is basically what we saw up to this point. Now, we are going to see how do we work with queues, what do we do with these queues ok. So, just like a data structure, any data structure you will have a create uh, element uh, create a data structure insert, check whether it is empty, delete and so on. These are these operations do not change, but the definition of these operations from the different data structures changes. So, that is what we are going to see with respect to queues here. So, we know the conceptual idea of a queue that we have seen up to now. So, now we can use a set of operations ok. So, and uh, but as as before from the ADT viewpoint as of now we are not bothered about how these operations are implemented, we are not bothered about that. Okay. So, let us look at the QADT, it, use, it has an implicit uh, uh, explicit linear order that is it, it comes in one particular order, insertions are and deletions or removals are performed individually you do not do it together you one element at a time you do it and there are no restrictions on the objects that can be inserted into the queue. Okay. So, that object has to be uh, inserted at the back of the queue that is the only condition that we have. And the object de designated as the front of the queue is the object that was in the queue the longest, ok. That is the definition of front. So, the front points to a element in the queue that has been in the queue the longest, that is what we are trying to say. And the remove operation removes the element from that particular front of the queue, that is the, uh, the one, the element that has been in the queue the longest is the one that is removed, ok. Now, let us look at. Uh, insertions, insertion ha happen at the rear of the queue and removals from the front of the queue which we have already seen and what are the main queue operations. Now, let us define the queue operations. So, the first is n queue, you have to have an object and inserts the element O or the object O at the end of the queue. So, just why we are using the term object is that particular element can be of any description, 
okay. But whatever that is that element will be inserted at the end of the queue that is all we are going to see. And D q which removes and returns the element at the front of the queue as in any deletion operation either you can just delete the element or you can delete the element and return it. It depends on your definition of that particular operation just like in any ABT. So, now let us look at the Q specification. So, you have to have some definitions that has to be provided by the user for you to specify a Q. So, what are these definitions? First is what is the maximum number of elements that may be on the Q. So, that means maximum number of items or max items we have to define this and we have to also talk about what is the item type, what is the type of data that we want to insert into the queue. This is the next thing that we have to talk about. Now, uh, so this is the queue specification that we have and we have operations. Now, before I go to this operation uh, you will remember that in any ADT uh, the, the definition of the ADT along with the operations uh, forms an ADT. If you have another set of operation it is another ADT that is still valid and still valid for QADT. Now, let us look at the operations. Here we are just listing all the operations depending on your application you will choose that particular uh, ADT along with I am sorry that particular queue along with the operation. So, some may have a subset of the operations which we have already discussed a lot in the previous modules but I am just want to stress that again. But what we are trying to tell here is the list of operations that we are talking about ok. So, the first one is create an empty queue this is a typical operation destroy a, destroy a queue that is remove all the elements from the queue determine whether a queue is empty or not this is a again a typical operation then add a new item to the queue. Now, here is where the difference comes what happens you are trying to you can add only in one particular way not like a normal list where you could have added anyway not like a stack where you add at the top. In the queue the definition of where you can add an ele uh, element or an item is fixed ok. Similarly, remove an item which element you or item can you remove that is also fixed because of the definition of the concept of queues. So, that is there and then uh, retrieve an element this also we have seen before this is retrieve an item from the that has been added what you can retrieve will be the one that has been added first. But then when you retrieve it either it could be deleted or you could just retrieve and show the element the queue remains the same. This again these operations we have already defined a number of times. So, now let us look at the operations in detail. So, you have create queue which returns a new queue that is uh, how that new queue is defined whether it is a list or an array or a linked list we are not talking about now. When you call create queue it will return an empty queue to you. So, when the empty queue is uh, given to you you will have the front and rear defined that is what it means and the uh, and the locations where you want to put the elements. Then add queue adds an element to the rear of a queue you do not have to say where to add it is automatically added to the rear of the queue is empty queue returns whether the queue is empty or not this is a typical boolean operation which returns true if it is empty and returns false if it is not empty. Then you have front queue which returns the element at the front of the queue here now no deletion happens it just returns the element at the front of the queue ok this is just accessing the element again this we have seen a, in a similar way in for stack and delete queue deletes, deletes the element at the front of the queue. So, that is the idea here. So, front end uh, delete are different in the sense delete removes the element and updates the pointer appropriately while front uh, queue returns the element no change in the queue. Now, there are some auxiliary queue operation these are the main operations. So, what are the main operations as we have seen create then add then um, you find out whether it is empty delete and then access the front element these are typical operations a similar set of operation you will remember from stack also. Now, there are some auxiliary queue operations what are the auxiliary queue operations front it returns the element at the front without removing which you have already seen size size can give the number of elements that have been stored in the queue this is also possible. Then is empty returns a boolean which you have already seen and exceptions are there this is typical again execution of a DQ on an empty queue will always throw an empty queued exception. Okay, so, you cannot uh, delete an element from a queue if it is empty. So, this is true for any data structure list we have seen up to now list stack now queue this exception comes. Now, added to this you will remember there is an add uh, thing you can add an element if the maximum size is not uh, exhausted, but that is implementation specific for array. This is true for again list stacks and queues. Uh, 
Now, just to summarize, these are the operations on the queue. DQ removes element from the front of the queue. NQ adds an element to the rear of the queue. First examines element at the front of the queue. Is empty determines whether the queue is empty. Size determines the number of elements in the queue. And there is another operation which is um, given here. It depends on the application. It returns a string representation of the queue, which means the elements of the queue are returned as a string. This is it depends on the application that you want to use the queue for. So the queue operation. Let us look at how this is. So the queue, the creation of an empty queue, is a. Uh, can be represented like this q q name that means you want to access the q that is q name you have the q operation so when you do the q operation a empty q is created then the operation determine whether a q is empty now let us look at what are the preconditions and what are the post conditions for these operations to occur so let us look at that so we are calling boolean is empty so it returns either true or false precondition no precondition is there Post condition, it returns true if the queue is empty, otherwise it will return false. So, this is the, deta, uh, the um, definition of a um, queue operation is empty. Now, let us look at the NQ operation. As you remember, the NQ operation inserts an element at the rear of the queue. Okay. So, where it is inserted is not need not be defined because it can be inserted only at the rear. So, that is the issue. So, now let us look at now. I have defined this particular NQ operation as a Boolean operation. What does that mean? It does the operation. If the operation is successful, it will return a true value, else it will return a false value. This is not the only way in which you can define this operation. You can define it as a NQ alone with uh, the item, um, I mean with just uh, no Boolean uh, value. But here we have chosen to define it like this. It is only just one way of defining. You can define it in many other ways also. So, let us first look at the original queue. Now, the original queue here which we have used contains 5 elements, I am sorry 4 elements uh, 23, 44, 77 and 52 and front points to the uh, first element and rear points to the last element that has been inserted. Okay. So, that is the original queue. Now, we want to do an insertion operation or an NQ operation. So, what do we want to do? We want to insert an element 40 and that is the data to be in inserted and the precondition for this NQ operation is uh, there has to be a new item otherwise you cannot do an insertion. So, the new item is the item to be added. Okay. So, once this is decided we will call the NQ operation. When you call the NQ operation you will call the NQ operation for the queue original queue and after the NQ operation what happens the front does not change 40 has been added after rear and rear is incremented. Now, here I am saying increment it is changed. Okay. It depends on the implementation whether it is incremented or whether the pointer points to other element and so on, but here uh, rear changes. Okay. Now, so what is the post condition? If the insertion is successful then the new item would be there found at the rear of the queue and uh, that is the back of the queue. Okay. That is the post condition. So, this is the NQ operation. Now, let us similarly define the DQ operation. So, the DQ operation deletes an element from where the only place from which it can delete is the front of the queue that is fixed as before where we can insert only at the rear. Now, again we are defining it as a Boolean operation not necessary as I told you before. So, what this Boolean operation will give a true if deletion is possible otherwise it will give a false value. So, again now when you call DQ you have to of course call give the queue name which queue you want to do this operation on and also the element uh, uh, here data item will contain the element that has been deleted. You need not define it like this you can or need not. So, let us assume the original queue has again uh, 23, 44, 77, 52 with 23 uh, front pointing to the element position of 23 and rear pointing to the position of 52. Okay. Let us assume that is the original queue. Precondition there is no precondition. Okay. Now, let us assume you, know, you call the DQ condition. Now, what happens is the front element that is 23 has been deleted and front has been updated. I will leave it as updated not incremented that depends on the implementation. So, it has been updated rear does not change. So, this is the op this is the queue after the DQ operation has been done and what is the post condition? If the queue is not empty the item that was added to the queue earliest will be removed in our case 23. 
However, if the if the queue is empty, that is, there is no element in the queue, then deletion is impossible, and so the uh, Boolean operation DQ will give a false value. So this is the post condition and precondition for this DQ operation. Uh, corresponding to this DQ operation, you have what is called a get front. Now this retrieves the element or the item at the front of a queue. So again, we can define it as a Boolean operation where you have queue queue item uh, queue item type and uh, we have been given a pointer to the front of the queue there is no precondition the post condition is if the queue is not empty queue front will contain the element that was added to the queue the earliest so that is what will happen so this remember the queue remains the same no deletion has happened no updation of the pointers or anything of that sort only thing is you are accessing the front element of the queue so now let us look at some typical queue applications what are the applications of queue so let us look at some real life examples, waiting in line is a typical example, waiting on hold for some technical uh, support. So uh, this buffering is a typical concept, uh, here I will not explain it as buffering, just waiting uh, till something else happens is a typical example. Uh, and there are some particular applications related to computer science, here we have threads, thread is a typical application where queues are used, then job scheduling. This is very, very, very important use of uh, queues, round robbing algorithm for the CPU allocation. Similarly, for memory allocation, you can have job scheduling when you have memory allocation also there will be a queue used. There are some other type of queues also called priority queues. So, queue is an important data structure so, uh, as far as computer science is concerned, especially for scheduling type of applications and buffering type of applications. We will go into that in detail when we talk about modules or applications. Then there are some direct application like access to shared resources. So, if you have a resource that is in demand then obviously you will have to wait in a queue for, for, the, uh, for that resource to be allocated to you and uh, that data structure where that is whether it is virtual or whether it is actual physical waiting it is called uh, for example for the use of a printer it could be a queue. Multi programming where different processes wait for the CPU time again that is a queue. Of course, uh, instead of just a queue, you could give it priority and things like that. We are not talking about that here, but the jobs are waiting for to be done and that is first come. The first normal course of action, whoever has come first will be given first or whichever process has come first will be given first. Computer networks, again there is lot of scheduling that is done for resources. Okay. Then OS, as we already discussed, shop, job scheduling, CPU allocation, uh, uh, memory allocation, all places you do have this. Uh, Q uh, data structure needed in, in computing. Indirect application, it is used as auxiliary data structures for algorithms as a buffer, it is a typical use of Q is as a buffer and also uh, as component of other data structures. So these are some of the very important applications of queues. Okay. Now why do we use queues? The purpose of Q is to provide some, uh, some form of buffering. But that buffering is only not only for storage, it is also having a methodology that whoever has come first has to be serviced first, so that bu buffering. Typical uses of queue in computer systems are process management as I already told you, buffer between the fast computer and the slow printer. So this queue data structure was used a lot when uh, we had um, input output devices that were slow compared to the computer which is fast. So that means there is a lag and that lag is tackled by having a queue data structures and jobs being uh, put in the queue and taken out of the queue in the first in first out manner. So uh, you can uh, define a queue as also an access restricted list. So there are many uh, situations when there is a speed mismatch. Okay. So in these type of applications uh, is uh, queues are used. So we are just looking at it from another viewpoint. So a service is there which has to uh, service more than one client and the arrival uh, rate of the clients is much more than the service rate. So any situation where such a uh, context occurs you we use a queue. So ticket counter also you can look at that the ticket counter the service is offered by the ticket uh, person issuing the ticket. But if the person, if the people, customers come in the same rate at which he is issuing tickets, there is no problem, there is no need of a queue. But since he is uh, issuing tickets at a slower rate than the people coming in, then there is a need for a queue. So that is the example. Then again a producer and a consumer operating at different speeds. So I have um, a producer-consumer problem, 
where um, I have uh, people producing things, but the current consumers uh, consuming it as a slower speed, then these uh, products have to be again weighed in a queue, input devices and programs, programs and outputs and so on. So, in computing again for any kind of problem involving FIFO, we need the queue, very very important data such as far as uh, uh, computing is concerned. Typical examples are printer queue, keyboard input buffer, uh, GU event queue, this is a uh, very important click on buttons, menu items, all these when you click on this is uh, always maintained in a queue for you. So, that as one is serviced, the next item on the queue is taken and then it is serviced and so on. Encoding of messages is another important and interesting uh, application of queue which we will be seeing in detail as we go along in the further modules. Okay. Uh, in simulation studies where there is a uh, uh, where you want to uh, the goal is to wait uh, reduce the waiting times. So, for example, you, op you want to optimize the flow of traffic at a at a traffic light then in that type in that uh, situation also you do tend to use uh, uh, queues. Determine the number of cashiers to have on duty at a grocery store at different times of the day. How do you do this? Uh, see if you put too many cashiers then when the uh, when the number of customers is less they are all wasting their time. So, what you can do is you can take an average length of the queue at different periods of day at the front at the grocery store and put as many um, cashiers as you want depending upon the length of the queue. You would have seen that in an, when you go for uh, you know um, what is the check in at the airport counter. Uh, suddenly there will be only two people uh, servicing and then the queue gets longer and uh, as the queue gets longer what happens uh, uh, they put in more uh, service counters this you would have seen as you wait in the airport that is that is what a good uh, uh, airline would do for its customer. So, the, now let us look at what we have spoken about now we basically discussed the concept of a queue from different angles and we looked at queue as an EDT we looked at the uh, FIFO principle the concept of that it had two ends and uh, the first uh, uh, the, the element that is longest in the queue is removed first and that was the concept of the queue. Then we explained uh, what the queue ADT was, what are the requirements of a queue ADT and then we looked at the operations. So, the operations that are done on queue is similar to the operation we saw on the other two day important data sets we have seen up to now list and uh, stacks. However, the definition of what is add and delete is what is changed or in other words in from Q's viewpoint NQ and DQ. And then uh, we discussed some possible applications of Q especially in the area of comp uh, computing. We did not look at application per se, but what we looked at is what are the situations where Q can be used in general. We will be going to the applications in uh, modules which we will be discussing later. So, thank you.